This is a slightly controversial topic because many junior doctors will tell you that they feel like a large part of their day is taken up by admin. This can sometimes be a bit frustrating and therefore can be cause for junior doctors not wanting to stay within the NHS or medicine. I thought it's important to talk a little bit about these administrative tasks, what they are and why we do it. And hopefully that will help you to understand why some junior doctors feel this way. Hello, my name is Tria and I am a junior doctor working in London. I graduated from the University of Oxford in 2022 and I have been working as a junior doctor since then. Let's get into the video. So here is some of the admin tasks that junior doctors have to do. So a ward round is essentially where you go and see every single patient in your ward. You will look at things like their blood tests, their observations, you will speak to the patient, examine them and decide on a plan going forwards. The junior doctor's role often is to document what goes on in these ward rounds. So most hospitals in the NHS work on electronic systems where every patient has an electronic profile and you can upload notes. So every day you have to upload a ward round documentation where you write down the plan for the patient going forwards, you write down things like the interpretation of their blood tests and their observations and you document any discussions that have happened with the patient patient, the patient's family or other specialty. Now often you will see junior doctors carting around these big portable computers or laptops and they will be typing during the ward round while the registrar or the consultant is leading the discussion. So obviously documentation is really important because it's important to have clear and thorough evidence about what's been going on with the patient's care and some senior doctors believe that documentation is really important for a junior doctor because they can learn a lot through that either by passive learning or osmosis. However, many junior doctors do feel like they spend a lot of their time behind a computer screen just typing, not really taking an active role in examining a patient, speaking to them, making the decisions. They feel like they are just typing up everything without using their brains. Another big admin task for a junior doctor is writing discharge letters. So this is a letter that summarises all the events of a patient's stay in hospital. So this will include the reason why they came into hospital, what was the main diagnosis and the main problem problems and then what has been done. The letter will also include things like any changes in the medication, any follow-up scans or appointments that need to happen, or any information and actions for the patient's own GP to do after the patient has been discharged from hospital. Now these letters can be long and they have a lot of medical information in. Now that's why junior doctors are the people that write these letters. In an ideal world, the patient flow is very fast in the hospital where patients can be discharged as soon as it is medically safe and appropriate for them to do so. This means that you could be writing several discharge letters per day, especially if you're working in an acute environment such as the emergency department or acute medicine. And I do feel in the future that that discharge letter can be just as easily written by artificial intelligence than by a real junior doctor but for now doctors are the ones that write these letters. So things like clear documentation of discussion, ward rounds and discharge letters are really important for a patient and can impact patient safety and care. However there has to be a balance in what a junior doctor does so you can understand why a junior doctor who has to do admin for 80% of their day may feel like they're not really being a doctor if they are not involved in any decision making, any interpretation of scans and results, any physical examination of practical skills. Being a doctor is all about balance and balancing these different tasks. Admin definitely plays an important role. The problem comes when that becomes the majority or most of what a junior doctor is doing in the day to day. Now for me, my favourite thing to do as a junior doctor is clerking in patients. So that is seeing them in A&E or when they have just come into hospital and referred to a specific specialty. That will be taking a history and examining the patient, then formulating a plan. The reason why I really like this part of the job is because it is the time when I think you use your brain the most, you use your analytical skills. And in a sense, you're working like a detective. There's a patient that's come in with a problem and you have to figure out what's wrong with them, what is causing the problem and how to fix it. It's really nice to work independently to find out all the clues and put them all together and come up with a differential diagnosis. And times like this really make you feel like you're using all the knowledge that you spent years learning in medical school. 
the thing that I like the least is actually doing the admin. As I've said earlier in this video, I really do see the importance of doing the admin and how that is important for patient care and patient safety. However, I do feel like if you are stuck behind a computer screen the whole day or the whole ward round, you're not really learning and you're not really being the best doctor. So I think that a balance is really important. And now obviously the balance may not always be struck, but that is what you have to aim for. So let's say you are on a ward round and you are the junior doctor who's carrying the computer around and typing up the notes. Obviously, you do have to be the person who documents the conversation on the ward round. But let's say the consultant or the registrar who's leading the ward round has listened to the chest and they have said there are crackles in the left base. And what you could do as a junior doctor is the end of the ward round or just after the consultant has done it, you could listen to the patient's chest yourself because then you're also learning and not just writing things down. So I hope that it's been useful to tell you a little bit more about what it is that junior doctors actually do. As you become more senior and you go through the different levels of training and towards becoming a consultant, your responsibility increases. So the types of jobs that you do on a day-to-day -day basis will really change. And hopefully your experience and your salary will reflect this change. But the number of years that you spend as a junior doctor range from five to 10 years. So that is why it's important to consider what it is like to be a junior doctor. It's really important to remember to look after yourself as well. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next video.